Hi everyone. We're going to read chapter one of the book, What Was Ellis Island? At first, Ellis Island was just a small scrap of empty land, a little over three acres. It barely stuck out of the water at high tide. The local Native Americans called it Gull Island. Seagulls were the only creatures that lived there. Around the time of the Revolutionary War, a farmer named Samuel Ellis bought the land. Although he later sold it, the island would keep his name. Then, in 1808, the U.S. government became the island's new owner. For a long while, the island was only used for storing guns to protect the harbor. No one dreamed that one day Ellis Island would become the gateway to America for many waves of immigrants. In fact, for most of the 1800s, the US government did not control immigration. There was an open door policy. That meant that any immigrant who wanted to could move there. The states were in charge of keeping track of the newcomers. The flow of immigrants remained fairly slow until the mid 1800s. Then a huge wave of people started to pour into the country. Nine out of 10 came from Ireland, England, or Germany. The state of New York alone admitted 8 million immigrants from 1855 to 1890. They came through a station called Castle Garden at the tip of New York City. Finally, in 1890, the federal government took over immigration from the individual states. It wanted to start testing newcomers to make sure they were free of disease and able to support themselves. Where would it build the first immigration station? Ellis Island seemed the perfect place. It was located in New York Harbor, where so many ships from Europe already docked. Yet the island was too tiny for the job. No problem. The island was made bigger. Engineers built a seawall away from the island. It was set deep into the harbor floor. They filled the area in between the wall and the island with tons of landfill, dirt, sand, and stone. At that time, vast tunnels, miles long, were being dug in New York City for a subway system. A lot of the landfill for Ellis Island came from the dirt shoveled out to make way for the subways. Ellis Island greeted its first immigrants on New Year's Day, 1892. An Irish girl named Annie Moore was the first to step foot on the island. Just 15 years old, she had brought her two younger brothers to America. Their parents were already there. So the three children made the long voyage by themselves. Today, a statue of brave Annie stands on the island. Then, only five years after opening, the buildings on Ellis Island burned to the ground. Plans for rebuilding started immediately. The old buildings had been made of wood. The new ones were made of red brick and stone. 
Now Ellis Island was completely fireproof. Right from the start, Ellis Island was swamped with more people than it could handle. During its first year, Ellis Island admitted nearly 450,000 immigrants, and the numbers kept growing. In 1898, a second island, also made of landfill, was added. Still, Ellis Island was too small to handle the crush of people. So in 1906, a third and final island was added. About Annie Moore. Annie Moore lived from 1877 to 1924. Annie Moore had a special 15th birthday on January 1st, 1892. She was the first immigrant to land at Ellis Island. Officials handed the rosy cheeked Irish girl a $10 gold piece for the honor. Leaving County Cork in Ireland 12 days earlier, Annie had traveled in steerage on the steamship Nevada. She brought her two younger brothers, Anthony, 11, and Philip, seven, with her. Despite her happy arrival, Annie faced the hard life of many immigrants. She settled with her parents in the Lower East Side of New York City and never moved more than a few blocks away. Marrying a bakery clerk, Annie gave birth to 11 children, though five died as infants. Annie died in 1924 at age 47. Now complete, Ellis Island was really three islands in one. From 3.3 acres, it had grown to 27.5 acres. The island was like a separate city in the harbor. There were 33 buildings, including a hospital, laundry, and power plant to make electricity. There were places to exchange foreign money, buy railroad tickets, and send telegrams. But the biggest and most important building by far was the main building, a massive structure. It was where all immigrants went when they first stepped on dry land and where they found out if the United States would become their new home, or if they would be sent back to their native land. About early Irish immigrants. Between 1845 and 1855, more than 1 million Irish immigrants arrived in America. Back in Ireland, blight was ruining the potato crops. Without their staple food, a million Irish starved to death. The terrible time became known as the potato famine. By 1855, Ireland had lost one fourth of its population to death or emigration. In the United States, the Irish still faced hard times. Prejudice against their Catholic religion was widespread in a country that was mostly Protestant. Shops and factories posted signs that said, no Irish need apply. Irish workers survived by shoveling coal, unloading ships, and cleaning yards. 
The huge wave of incoming Irish transformed the populations of New York City and Boston. In 1847, when the first Irish masses arrived, New York City had a total population of 372,000, nearly double that number of Irish, about 650,000 flooded into the city during the next 10 years. This is the end of chapter one of the book, What Was Ellis Island? The next video will be on chapter two. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.